A lot of you guys have been wondering if I still recommend Note 4 as a good notes replacement. I can't answer that question unless we look at the apps side by side. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. I have divided this into a three part series, and this first part of the video is going to cover the basics of the two apps. On the left side of the screen, I have Note 4, and on the right, I have Good Notes. Note 4 is the cheaper of the two apps for $5 for a one time purchase. The app is limited to Apple devices and only to M series MacBooks, so it's a little bit limited. Good Notes, on the other hand, works on any MacBook because it has a dedicated macOS version. If you want to stay in the Apple ecosystem, the app will cost you between $24 to $30 once, so this is a one time purchase. But if you want to use Good Notes on Android and Windows as well, you will need a subscription of $10 a year. However you look at it, Note 4 is the cheaper app. For creating notebooks, both apps do a pretty good job. You get notebook covers for both. If you're anything like me, you'll probably want to turn them off. And you can do that in both apps. You have a decent variety of page templates in both apps. The setup you have in GoodNotes, all your templates are divided into small sections and you can't really view all of them on one window, which can be a lot to navigate. But your page templates are a lot easier to navigate in Noteful because you have this whole page where you can easily just scroll through all of them. Both apps will give you color options for your notebooks. In GoodNotes though, your colors are limited to a single page template. As you guys can see, I have different colors for this template, and this one also has different colors. Customizing your colors can be exhausting in GoodNotes if you use different templates and you want to use the same color across all of them. Noteful's page colors are centralized, and this is the setup that I prefer. It's a lot easier to work with because once you change the background for your pages, it changes for all the templates in the app. Which of these setups is best for your workflow? Do let me know. In both apps, you can choose the background color and a different color for the lines in your templates. You get pretty much the same page sizes in both apps with a few differences. Noteful focuses on presentation pages, so you get 16x9 and 4x3 page sizes. GoodNotes, on the other hand, lets you customize your page sizes in points. The biggest page you can create in GoodNotes is about 1.8 meters. And the smallest is only 7 centimeters. That's about the size of a business card, give or take. You can create anything in between from 7 centimeters to 1.8 meters. This paper size range is insane. And we haven't seen anything like it in any other handwriting note taking up. I don't use any native paper templates in my notes because I prefer using our digital notebooks. And this is also important if you use digital planners as well. For custom page templates, Noteful lets you save complete PDFs that you can organize into different categories. As you guys can see, I have all our digital notebooks and planners organized very systematically, and this makes them very easy to use. GoodNotes only saves one page for your custom templates, and that means that I have to import my digital notebooks every time I want to use them. And that really becomes a lot of work if you do this often. GoodNotes two toolbars have always looked clustered. And they still do, even when you move the toolbar in Noteful to the top, just to try and have the apps look sort of the same. In Noteful, your toolbar can go on any side of your screen, which is one of the things I love about Noteful. But in Good Notes, your toolbar can only either be at the top or bottom. 
Both apps customize your toolbar, but it's a lot easier to do in Noteful than it is in GoodNotes because in Noteful, the switch that you turn on or off, unlike the setup you have in GoodNotes, you have to remove the tools from your toolbar. Adding them back is a lot simpler. Noteful also has the option to change the toolbar color, so the toolbar can either be dark or light in Noteful. Though I prefer the setup in Noteful, chances are you're only going to do this once. It wouldn't make you choose one app over the other, because what matters is that you can customize your toolbar in either app. Do any of you guys ever choose apps based solely on how they look on the user interface? Do let me know. I have used both apps extensively over the past years, and in both apps, I have set up these pen tools the best I can according to what works for me in the different apps. All the different pen types are better in Noteful than in GoodNotes. Handwriting is one of the main features that I look at when choosing a handwriting note taking app. I'll go with Noteful on this one. But both apps do have a ballpoint, fountain, and brush pen. But Noteful has more customization options that create unique pens with a wide range of characteristics. So against Noteful, GoodNotes pen customization feels a bit inadequate. GoodNotes also has a calligraphy pen, which Noteful does not. Even though you're only limited to just three thicknesses, you can easily access them on the toolbar in GoodNotes. But in Noteful, they are a two-step process, which is too much if you keep changing your thicknesses. But the app has five fixed sizes instead of the three that you get in GoodNotes. Fewer steps are always better. Noteful has a wider range for your pen thickness though. It goes all the way up to five millimeters, where GoodNotes only gets to a maximum of two millimeters. If you're using GoodNotes, have you ever felt like you need a pen thicker than 2mm? Both apps do a good job and give you a variety on your toolbar as well as make it easy for you to pick custom colors. You also get dotted and dashed pens in both apps, but GoodNotes has made them easier to access. So if you really use them, you'll probably prefer the setup in GoodNotes. Which pen do you think looks better with my handwriting? Both highlighters are pretty good. They go behind your ink so they don't dim your notes when you layer them. The setup in the two apps is really the same and you have a free hand. Or straight highlighter. A new update has been rolled out introducing a pencil tool in GoodNote 6. As is to be expected, it feels great. Pencils tend to write better than pen tools in almost every note-taking app that has them. It has similar options to the ones that you get for your pen tool. Let us know if this is an exciting update for you. GoodNotes has a smoother pixel eraser. It also has a standard eraser that works like the one in Noteful and a stroke eraser. The pixel eraser in Noteful is not very smooth, but the app also has a stroke eraser. An eraser is an eraser. I mean, that's all that matters, right? Both apps are selective for the highlighter. And they support auto deselect. While Noteful has five fixed sizes for the eraser, GoodNotes only has three, but that doesn't matter as long as you can erase your mistakes. Noteful has the most impressive zoom range for a handwriting note taking app on the iPad. Thanks to a recent update, we now know what that range is because the app can now display your zoom level on the screen. It ranges from as small as 20% 
to 20,000%. If that is not impressive, I don't know what is. GoodNotes doesn't display your zoom percentage on the screen and it also doesn't have an impressive range. You can also lock your zoom level in Notful, which also locks the zoom tool, and this completes the zoom tool for a handwriting note taking app. Auto advance in Notful is easy to follow and understand, especially when you're moving between lines. You won't lose track of where you are on the page, and this is something that you don't really get out of the box in GoodNotes. Because without really doing much with the app, moving between lines is a pain. The zoom tool takes some getting used to in good notes and it's really terrible moving between lines if you haven't tweaked it up a little bit. So you have to heavily rely on moving it manually or customizing it. Once it's set, of course, it kind of sticks. The zoom tool in Note 4 is perfect out of the box and doesn't need any additional work on your part. This will probably make more sense to new users though than old ones because, I mean, if you're an old GoodNotes user, you're probably used to this. Nofu also has two unique features for the Zoom tool that we have not seen anywhere else in 2024. It supports left-hand mode where the Zoom section goes at the top of your screen. And it also supports right-to-left writing. Both of these features you don't have in GoodNotes. Another feature that you don't get in GoodNotes is the Favorites toolbar. Let's hope that we'll be getting it soon because seeing that we can now customize our toolbar now. That's usually a precursor to the Favorites toolbar. Notful does have a Favorites toolbar, but it is mixed with your color palette and that can be confusing at first, so it takes some getting used to. It is still better than not having a Favorites toolbar. It's still early to say, but not for so far has ticked more boxes than good notes. We've only just scratched the surface though. While these are core features of a handwriting note taking app, there's a lot more to digital notes than handwriting, right? But I'm curious to know how you guys feel so far about these two apps. Which one are you leaning towards? Do tell.